Hey everybody, and welcome back to Mr. and Mrs. Ace of Traits. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. If you haven't done that yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also make sure you enable those notifications so you don't miss whenever we post a new video. In today's video, we're gonna be working on a grandma's project. Uh, it's actually a, a restoration of her windmill. It fell over and it took a beating and it's just been neglected. And that's a shame because it was a, a special gift to her and we want to make sure and get it back up in working order. So I hope you guys enjoy part one of a two-part video for grandma. And like I mentioned earlier, it was in pretty bad shape. The first thing we had to do was figure out how bad of a shape it was in. And thankfully, we were surprised to find out we didn't have to fabricate too many pieces. And I know you're thinking, or you're probably thinking, wouldn't it be cheaper just to go buy a new one? And the answer is yes, absolutely. But this one had sentimental value. This was purchased for my grandmother by my grandfather before he passed away. And once we had it disassembled, we went to work to see how bad the damage was and see if it was any piece was, you know, unrepairable. And see if that rust had eaten through any spots and luckily it hadn't. So I grabbed some wire brushes and some different attachments for my drill and started cleaning it, knocking off that top layer of rust, even a couple of layers of paint, uh, kind of getting down to some of that bare metal and it was pretty fun. That work table I'm using uh, is kind of an interesting story. We put it together with some old fence posts and some old, an old set of table legs that we found. So it's refurbished and repurposed from some old materials to make it new again. And if you like the way it looks, I love the table itself. It's very sturdy, it works great. Uh, subscribe to the channel because there's also a little video that talks about the, that table and how we built it and put it together. But it's great, we use it on a lot of projects. And back to the windmill, you can see we're still knocking off all the dirt and the rust and some of the paint, and cleaning it up using the wire brushes and uh, all the different parts of the windmill that we can actually get to. Then we stepped it up and grabbed this uh, paint and varnish stripper that we got from Home Depot. I love it because it's eco-friendly and it works really, really well. You spray it on the material or the piece that you're working with, let it set for about 30 minutes or so. You'll see it the paint bubbling up a little bit. And uh, then from there, it's really easy. You scrape it off with a scraper or like we did for most of it with just some steel wool. And you can see how easy this paint is coming off. We use this uh, paint and varnish stripper on just about every part of the windmill. Love it, highly recommend it. And the next step in this process was removing the rust from different parts of the windmill. And so I have seen people use distilled white vinegar before, and I thought, you know what, this would be a good project to test that out with. So I filled up a little uh, bin and put some pieces in there and let it sit for a little while just to let that vinegar do its thing, grab some steel wool, and I was surprised at the results. I cannot believe how well it actually worked. The only thing is I would recommend that you have some baking soda to neutralize that acid whenever you get done. Otherwise, that rust will come back very quickly. Uh, and also, what was really cool was that vinegar helped knock off some of the paint on the other side. Pretty awesome stuff. After cleaning all the rust off, the next step was to take a look and see what pieces I needed to fabricate and some of the the pieces that really needed my attention were 
fabricating new brackets that connect the blades to the main bearing which connects to the tail and that whole unit then mounts on top of the tower of the windmill and the old brackets were thin metal and flimsy and falling apart and some of them were broken so I found some old brackets that I had lying around drilled some holes in the uh, necessary spots and then reconnected everything once the blades were connected to the main bearing with those uh, newly fabricated brackets, I turned my attention to the spine that runs around the, the backside of those blades. And the purpose of that spine is to keep those blades rigid. Uh, once you get the angle on those blades, you don't want them to move much. And so that's what that spine does. It helps keep everything together solid. And speaking of the angle of those blades, I did a little research and discovered that 35 degrees is the optimum angle for windmill blades. And so I grabbed my handsaw and found my 90 degree and then my 45 degree. And once I found those two angles, I kind of looked and kind of eyeballed where the 35 degree angle would be made that mark of course that's 35 degrees ish made that cut laid it flat on my table and then went to work folding bending those blades to get that 35 degree angle pretty straightforward pretty fun pretty cool and we'll speed this process up After the windmill blades were bent to the angle that I wanted them, then it was to, next step was to attach the galvanized ring to the backside, that spine that I was talking about earlier. I don't own a welder, and so I use some JB Weld. I've used uh, JB Weld in the past to patch holes in gas tanks and other little projects, and it works really, really well. So I was kind of hoping that it would do the job here. And I was pleased with the results. Once I put it on there, it was holding pretty tight, pretty firm. And then the, the next step is to sand it and paint it. But uh, before we got to there, this is gonna be the end of part one. So we put it all together and we tested it out. And so far, it's looking really good. I'm really excited so far with where it's how far it's come. But in part two, you'll actually get to see this thing all put together and we deliver it to, to our grandmother. Oh yeah, and you'll get to see her reaction. It's great. It's so great. And um, we also built a base to prevent it from falling over in the future. So that is in part two as well, where you get to see that base. So make sure and come back. We thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing to the channel. If you haven't done that, make sure and do that. And again, remember, make it, bake it, fix it. Whatever it is, do it yourself.